Welcome to week 39 of reselling full-time in Australia. My name is Michaela. Welcome to the channel where we talk all about flipping items online, preferably eBay, for a profit and some eco-friendly tips along the way. Today is the Monday public holiday of New Year's of 2022. So this week is the first working week of 2022. First task for tonight is shipping out all of my orders from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But firstly, I'm gonna take you through what we did Saturday morning, the first day of 2022, when we had to compost all of our Christmas and New Year's food. It's the first day of 2022, and we've decided to compost all of our food waste from Christmas, our Christmas parties, and New Year and um, my compost bin is currently full. So we're keeping it simple and we're just digging a hole and burying it and it'll break down very quickly. So hubby's doing the digging at the moment. Good job, babe. Thank you. <laughs> so best practice is to dig at least 20 centimeters down, put the food waste in, cover it with a layer of cardboard and dirt. This stops any rodents or any smell uh, from it as well, just to keep everything clean and neat and tidy and you don't have to think about it again. my office compost waste so we've got a few things in here just pieces of paper um, old leaves that have fallen off my office plants these are op shop tags they're not glossy they're just paper so they can be composted and then some misprints on my compostable shipping labels as well so all of that's going to go in here as well <music> Okay, so now that the food waste is in, we've got to put a layer of cardboard down. This just stops the smell coming up so that little puppies don't go digging or we don't get rats or possums coming in and digging as well. Composting does not need to be hard. Keep it simple and you'll do it regularly and your garden will love you for it. While I'm here, I'll talk to you about our banner grass. So this is called banner grass. It's a type of grass, it's not bamboo and it's non-invasive when it grows. And it's fantastic if you're looking at permaculture practices. Um, but why we're using it is it is a fantastic source of nitrogen and a really good feed for chickens so eventually we want to have chickens and we're growing this now so that when we have the chickens we've got plenty of feed for them another thing it's really good for is for mulching the garden um, you just chop drop it down and it mulches really well it's very fast growing so it just comes back in a few months time um, and it's a really good way to capture water that's flowing away on your property so for us this is the side of our house and we have a lot of water that just runs down the side here into the backyard so we've stuck the banner grass in here to capture some of that water so we're actually utilizing it on our own property and then there's plenty of uses for this banner grass so what i'm doing because we had a couple of clumps here that died off um, our strike weight rate was three out of five which was pretty good um, so i'm going to cut back this big one and pull back to some of the nodes you get nodes all the way along dry it out stick it in a glass of water to get roots growing and then i'll replant it here so i can feel here there's a node just there so when i pull this down there's another node there and then a node there so if i cut just below that the roots will start growing from here that i can then plant back into the soil so we'll just make a little chop there. All right, I needed two hands for that. That was pretty strong. So I've just cut it under the node there and it's got plenty of new shoots to keep on growing nice and strong. But from every single node, I can get a new plant. So I can get 
hopefully a dozen new plants off this one. We only need two more, but there's plenty of other opportunities on our whole property that we can use it for. Okay, so this is what the banner grass looks like once you've chopped it and pulled back all the leaves. Now, all of those leaves are fantastic mulch that we've now used on our new banana tree. Banana trees love to be heavily mulched and this will just keep it nice and cozy, keep the water in and uh, feed it as well. This is actually a really proud moment for me because it's actually seeing all of my research and hard work over the last two years actually coming together and seeing synergy and self-sufficiency in our property finally. So I did my permaculture introduction to permaculture course about 18 months ago and that's where I learned all about banner grass and how different plants work together. If you match different plants together they'll work together they'll be self-sufficient and this is from 18 months ago research six months ago we planted the banner grass and a couple of weeks ago we got the banana tree and now it's all come together. This is providing for my banana tree and the banana tree will provide for me. That's pretty cool. And our first tomatoes for 2022. Jumping into Monday's packing, we have 19 orders going out on eBay, one on Poshmark and one on Depop. Let's pick them out. Going through these items, I'll tell you what they sold for. Keep in mind that is the gross sale amount. So it's not taking out cost of goods, fees, taxes, anything else that I consider a cost on that item. First up, we have just this little tunic from Forever New that went for $20 plus shipping on Poshmark. These amazing Whitner shoes, boho loafers, they went for $45 plus shipping on Depop. Okay, all of these are from eBay. So these amazing vintage brown boots, leather and suede, they went for $35 plus shipping. A really good summer beach piece. This is from a brand Adrift, just a boutique brand. Went for $30 plus shipping. This is a bit of a dated piece. It came in a bulk lot. I would never pick this up individually from an op shop, but minimal work on this one. That's just the little tag there. That went for $15 plus shipping. This is another basic piece I would never have picked up individually, but it came in a bulk lot. So again, minimal work. This is just a Zara piece. It went for $15 plus shipping. Really cute one teaspoon shorts. These are a great item to resell. I wish they were in my size. They went for $29 plus shipping. This dress I actually picked up myself uh, from an op shop, so it still only cost me four or five dollars. It's just a little dotty piece, nothing amazing, but I knew that if I wanted to pick it up, then maybe somebody else will be interested in it. It didn't fit me, so I listed it and it sold for $16 plus shipping. Another personal buy, I would have got this for about three or four dollars. It didn't fit me, so I popped it up. This went for $20 free shipping. This dress came in a bulk lot, cost me about five dollars. It went for $24 plus shipping. I love this piece and I don't know why it took so long to sell. It is a vintage satin robe. That's the tag on it. Really amazing pattern on it. I absolutely love it. This went for $24 plus shipping. A basic forever new dress, really nice embossing on this and it's fully lined. That's the tag there. That went for $24 plus shipping. A gorgeous boho top, really nice cuff sleeves lovely detail on the front. This went for $22 plus shipping. This piece is up there in some of my top favorite finds. It is vintage, so check out that tag, hand embroidered, 
very cool embroidery on it, vintage. So that went for $42 plus shipping. Basic top is from Maggie T. It's a fantastic brand to resell, so keep an eye out for it. This went for $30 plus shipping. Okay, so this is a bundle buy. One person bought both of these. These dresses are just simple singlet style dresses. I've got them up for $5 plus shipping each. I got a bunch of these at a five or three dollar filler bag sale at a community op shop and so they've virtually cost me nothing and I've just got a single listing with uh, multiples on it and so I'm just ticking through these every now and then and it's great to get a bundle out of them which minimizes shipping costs so these went for five dollars each plus shipping now the person did pay for shipping on both of them so I will refund one amount of shipping I sold lots of Forever New this weekend. So this is just another basic fit and flare dress, $20 plus shipping. So a view that I don't usually show you guys is these two shelves here. They're in my garage. And so a lot of my filming is done downstairs in my house in my home office where most of my stuff is kept. But this is just for odd bits and bobs usually when I buy it in a bulk lot so that it's all keep kept together. And one of the things that I tick through very regularly is some stockings and lanterns that I bought in a bulk lot. So this weekend I sold a heap of these like stocking socks and fishnet stockings. Which ones did I sell? So I've got those. Sheer stockings. I think it's these ones back here. Yeah, they're like a swirl design. Anyway, I got all of these stockings and socks and all of these paper lanterns. There's three different designs. I'll pop up some photos of these, of the actual listings, so you can see them a lot better. All of these I got for less than 50 cents each and I'm just ticking through a few a week and I don't usually show you guys because it's not very exciting plus I'm usually finished filming downstairs but with these uh, the socks I just ship in these craft envelopes 100% recycled not bleached so they can just go in a compost bin they ship the socks and they go for a dollar 10 stamp just one stamp untracked I sell these for about five dollars each and the stockings for about eight dollars each I'm not going to put tracking on that it's not necessary and at that price most customers don't expect that so for the stockings they fit into a larger envelope again it's craft 100% recycled and that takes two stamps uh, so two dollars twenty and shipping on those so yeah I just tick through a few of those sort of every week which adds a nice little top up on my sales each week in saying all of that I've just had a buyer purchase all of these together this weekend so that means I only have one shipping cost and I will send them tracked on top of all of those sales, I then sold these on Instagram to a follower, which is a nice little addition to all the sales. So if you guys ever see anything on my videos that you're interested in, just message me. We can always do a better deal through PayPal. I'm driving down an empty freeway. No way. See the sunrise behind me. Today feels like a new chapter, a new beginning. It is the first working day of 2022. It's Tuesday, and my goal for this week is to get everything in my stockpile listed before I go sourcing again. It's gonna be a big week and I'm actually so excited to just get back into work. Let's set up the office to photograph and list. All right, we've got 30 items to list today. Let's get photographing. wanted to show you a little reselling trick. 
get yourself a peg. I got this giant one from Typo, but you can just use a standard clothing peg. This top looks pretty blah on this mannequin at the moment because it's a size 16 and the mannequin is a size 8. So let's fix it with this peg. Voila! Much, much better. This just gives a much more accurate representation of how the clothing is meant to fit on the body shape. So we've got a waistband here which is sitting on the waist of the mannequin and a little peplum finish which flares out. And so it's a much better representation because it is a peplum style and it is meant to be fitted on the waist. If I photographed it without the peg, which is sitting back here now, so I'll show you the difference. All I'm doing is pegging the waist. If I take that off, that is not a good representation of how it's meant to sit on the body. It's not an A-line shirt. It's meant to be fitted. And so if I photograph it like that, it's not representative of how it's gonna sit on the customer's body. So we've pinned it up so that they can get a good idea of how it will sit. Thursday morning. <laughs> Bailey would like to say hello as well. <laughs> you say hi? Hello. <laughs> thank you very much for the kisses. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bailey must know that I feel like crap. Um, it's Thursday morning and I'm just feeling very, very stressed and sad. Everything that's going on with COVID at the moment is just hitting me like a ton of bricks. Thinking about all of the single use waste medical waste that's being produced through this time and it's just weighing on me very heavily there's absolutely no recycling or reuse stream of all of that waste which is understandable 100 percent but also incredibly infuriating that we just as human beings create so much waste that can't be reused and just has to go in a big hole somewhere for people to discover in hundreds of years time and talk about the pandemic in a history book. <laughs> so let's turn this frowny upside downy and do what we can today. Firstly, I'm going to get into listing. I am saving things from landfill and I'm passing them on to be loved and reused and cherished. And that is what I can do to help with the ecological downfall of our earth. <laughs> Another thing I do when I'm stressed like this is I get into the garden. So I've picked myself some more tomatoes. I've cleaned up our palm leaves that have dried and dropped down. Um, I've picked up the dog poo. <laughs> um, all little things just to make our home a lot nicer, calmer, cleaner. So I'm doing what I can today. I hope you guys are able to do what you can. And if that is absolutely nothing but sitting on the lounge during this time, that is okay. Right now is a crazy, crazy time in the world. So just be kind to yourself and others. Look after yourself. On that note, let's get listing. Okay, I'm feeling much better this afternoon. I gave myself some time just to relax on the lounge and feel all of the feels that were going on this morning. <laughs> and now I've done some photography and listing. So I just wanted to quickly take you through my photography process because everybody does it differently and I find it so interesting to see other people's processes. So let's go through step by step exactly what I do once I bring an item home. So once I bring an item home, it comes down the stairs and usually ends up in a bag or a box sitting over here on the lounge. This is where my stockpile sits. And then I'll hang it up in the wardrobe so that all of the like wrinkles and folds and stuff will hopefully fall out. Um, obviously you can see it's not a foolproof plan. That one's still quite wrinkly. If it's really, really bad and it will definitely sell better if it's ironed, then we'll add it to just our personal ironing pile. So then I pick out the items I'm gonna photograph each day and I'll put it onto my desk here, pick it up, uh, pop it on the hanger and bring it over here to my white wall. This is just a standard wall hook that we got from Bunnings. These two lights 
are soft box lights and they came from eBay. They're about 50 bucks for the pair. They just get plugged in down the bottom. And then I've got my little office babies down there that I look after and they just add a little bit of personality to my photos as well. As I'm photographing, I put it straight into the inventory box. So there's a lot of people that will like photograph and put it in a separate space and then work out their inventory later. But that's and double handling the item. And so for me, it's a lot easier if I can just photograph, whack it straight in the box. Before it goes in there, I come over here and I measure the item. I just used the standard measuring tape. I did have a little three meter one and it broke. So this was just from the garage cupboard and that's what I've been using works quite well. Measure it there because it's nice and flat. Take photos of the measurements. On, this is just an old iPhone that I use for my images. So what I'll do is I'll actually take a photo of the inventory box that I'm then listing in so that I know exactly where the item is once I come over to my computer, mind the mess, <laughs> and start listing, I know exactly where it is. This is an example, I take photos of the item hanging up, make sure it's pretty clear, bright, nice white on the background. And then I come over, take photos of the tags. And then these two photos don't end up on my listing. They're just for me for reference. So I write down these measurements. So that's the chest measurement. So I double that number. And that's the length measurement. And that's just the single number on its own. Best practices for photography on eBay. The title image has to be a square. The rest of the images don't have to be, but I usually just keep it in square mode. Just have it really. Make sure you take at least four photos. We know that that is the minimum amount of photos that eBay likes on a listing. So at least four. Make sure they're all different as well. You don't want four of like just the front. You would take one of the front, one of the side, the back and then the tags. You don't have to have softbox lights or a perfect white background but it definitely helps. If you're going to be doing this as a side hustle, a hobby or full-time part-time then I would recommend investing in some sort of clean and clear setup like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's a lot of people that will photograph like on the back of doors because it's still a white background and that's perfectly fine. Just want to make sure that the customer can very clearly see the item and all of the details on it, any flaws on there, give a really good representation of the item just so that the customer has a very good idea and isn't misled in any way or doesn't miss anything. You want the customer to fall in love with your product from the photos. All of the description, item specifics, everything else is an added bonus and just gives further detail to the product. But your photos need to sell your item. It's Thursday night, let's ship out some items. Everything sold today went on eBay. So starting off with this really vintage dress. The buttons on the front and check out the tag on that. Very cool. That went for $20 plus shipping. This review dress is actually more of an emerald green. It's just not coming out in the video. But this sold super quickly within a couple of hours of me listing it yesterday. That went for $25 plus shipping. This Maggie T top, really basic sheer chiffon sort of material. Uh, that again, I listed this yesterday. So it went really, really fast for $20 plus shipping. A set of four James Patterson books. This went for $40 free shipping. A sealed DVD. This I have no idea where I got it from but it cost me a dollar and it's going for $6.93. It was part of my 30% off sale that I've got on at the moment for older items. A brand new with tags City Chic High Low Top. Just a basic sheer piece that would be worn over something else. That went for $20 plus shipping. This piece I listed I think on Tuesday and it went for $15 plus postage. I love this dress and it was one size too small which is super frustrating because I wanted to keep it so bad. But this gorgeous piece is out for $30 plus shipping. So as you know, I ship everything 100% plastic free tonight. I cannot be bothered with doing boxes. So I'm going to put everything into compostable satchels that I get from Hero Packaging and Better Packaging. So I'll show you what those look like now. And I've got my satchels here, which is a terrible system I've got going on because they are all just shoved in here on top of one another. But first up, I've got these gorgeous Hero Packaging satchels which 
are supporting a local Indigenous artist and they are 100% home compostable and reusable as well so my customers can reuse the satchel once they get their item. So those are for my really little items and then I've got slightly bigger ones in the better packaging range which aren't reusable but they are still great um, and then extra large ones in the rear packaging as well. My shipping system at the moment is I pick everything, I take it upstairs into my kitchen and I pack it all up there. And at the moment I've got packaging supplies in my office, my kitchen and my garage and it's infuriating me. <laughs> so I'm needing to change this system. It's just sort of grown as I've grown and I've just made it work. Um, but what I need to do is I'm currently looking for two sets of drawers very similar to these. I want to put them there so that I can get my satchels organized, my envelopes, my thank you notes, sticky tape, washi tape, all the other things that I use for shipping and actually bring it all down here and have this as a complete shipping station so that I'm not double handling everything and it's all in one place. So everything in my office I have tried to get second hand first. So I've only just sort of worked out that I need these drawers. So on my next few op shopping trips I'm going to try and keep an eye out for drawers like that. I'm also keeping an eye out on Facebook Marketplace because stuff like that always comes up on there. It's a great resource. If I cannot find anything via those avenues and I still really need them, then I'll buy it new. So I'll keep you up to date if we find them. Look, you can see my entire lounge now. Oh my gosh. It's been a big week of listing. I have just knuckled down and smashed it out. And it feels so, so good to see the entire lounge now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I've just got... Hang on there. I've just got that lot of clothes left to do and it's Friday night. We've got nothing planned and I really, really want to get that stock listed. So I'm going to. I'm just going to knuckle down tonight and just get it done before the weekend and a fresh start next week. Let's do it. Let's break down week 39. So I was really keen to get back into listing to start the new year right. So I started this week by listing 58 items. I had a total amount of sales on all platforms, which is Facebook, Depop, Poshmark, and eBay of 45. And the amount of resources that we diverted from landfill back into the circular economy, which is a combination of the secondhand items themselves and the reused packaging material is 22 kilograms. 